Hit it. Hit it. Boom, 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 boom. Run the show, Travis. Run the show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Corpus Animus podcast. My name is Travis Mayer here with Brandon Dorman and CTP. You, do you want to ask me my experience of the games? Yeah, or, let's well, do that. <laughs> no what much. was your experience of the games? Because you weren't <laughs> those, there. Those workouts are really hard. Or you could t- ask about my lap pull down experience this morning. So this morning, Brandon had a life or death situation with the beautiful rogue lap pull down machine that I, I need to so know whose fault was this? Was it user error or did it was no, it? The, 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 it would be, it's rogue's fault. <laughs> I'm blaming rogue. I'm just kidding. Well, for those it'd be like rogue. who put it together. Yeah. John. So it could be. for those that have ever seen these large lap pull down machines that rogue has, they're amazing and they're super, super heavy. It was actually, we should have some video of getting that in because it was like six guys carrying this like one yeah. foot at a time. But the way that the cord goes into the weight system is there's like a threaded it's almost like a screw. Yeah. And so it, it threads in and somehow it, like, there's a lock nut on top. Right. And somehow that came loose. It just, it <laughs> run them. and our lat, you were doing lap pull down. Yeah, so I, our lap pull down uh, bar is actually has a good amount of weight. I mean, I would it. say it weighs 20 pounds. No so it's not, way. Okay. It's not I'm like trying to, brand. I'm trying to exaggerate. <laughs> so people know that well, my life it was, was on fire. It was like on fire hollow. too. If I, he usually sets it on That's fire. Good, lap we should probably buy one of those, the hollow ones in case it happens again. Seriously. Oh man. 20 pounds. It felt like it when it was coming down on my face. I Travis. bet you it's 25. <laughs> this story has changed <laughs> from 10 minutes ago to now. Oh, man. Uh, it, it did scare me. For did. those that are listening, if you've had those experiences where like someone jumps out at you and then your heart feels like it's just like, it literally it feels like it's jumping out of your yeah. chest and this adrenaline dump, it uh, was all of that. And then Travis is sitting over there. Instead of jumping up and being a good friend, he's like, you okay? <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, I man. mean, you were fine. You were moving. You popped up looking at the machine. I, my knee hurts so bad. That's the only thing that got hurt out of that is my knee scraped the edge of the lap pull down. That's all the time we have for lap pull downs. <laughs> so that was my interview with Brandon. We finally got Travis on the podcast. We've had a couple it's others a talking while. about the games. It, yeah, it has it's been like what? Six months. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't remember like the that. last time we did well, one. No, I feel like we, we did, did one random one when I just walked in here and was like, hey, let's podcast. I don't kind know. Kind of as ever, a joke. Yeah. But, oh, yeah. <laughs> did that ever even get published? No, no we didn't. Uh, we didn't put that on there. should have. It was gold. Um, my favorite experience from the game or my favorite memory of the games for you was the capital workout. Yep. So I want to get to that early yep. on in this this podcast. But you have something else coming up first. And we're, you're about to take off today from Madrid. <laughs> what, International, what, baby. What made you jump into that as opposed to Rogue? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know Sorry. if that was the main reason. No, Sorry, so I, had, the, I had to put a zinger on you. Yeah, no, the first <laughs> one was I got invited originally from tier before the games. They yeah. were like, hey, would you want to go to Madrid? I said, I'm not making any decisions right now. We can talk when we get back. So when I got back, he messaged me and says, hey, do you want to maybe just come and spectate? And I said, mm, maybe. And then I'm like trying to weigh the pros and cons of that of being gone with the wife at home. And then I'm just gone on a vacation <laughs> yes, by see, myself. See you, Lauren. Uh, and it's not like I'm going there for my job. That's me literally just going to hang out, which I guess technically is for my job to interact and yeah, mingle. Yeah. Um, and then he messaged back a few minutes later. He's like, Hey, would you mind competing or want to compete? And I was just kind of like, sure. I felt like at the games, I just felt like there was like a, the fire of the competition was in my, in me was missing a little bit. So I was like, talking with Lauren about it. And she's like, well, why not put yourself in that situation more often? So then you can work on it and try to work on the things that you didn't do at the games and want to work at now. So she was like, go for it. Yeah. You know, it's funny because like early on in your career, I don't think you competed as much as, or at least you want to now, right? Like you're doing more competition. Originally started like in 2011, I was doing every local yeah. event you could ever possibly imagine. Including was, in my backyard. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah, that's right. I was there. You were Those one were of the th- first people I ever filmed with a, like a bullshit camera. It was Travis. And now really? like, years later, here we that's are. Awesome. Here we are. Back, that was like Mike, right when you started yeah, though. Mike was like one of the head judges yes, running around yes. yelling at me for no repping. I have the videos <laughs> of all this. We should make a podcast of this. Uh, of yeah, we're going to every single workout from the faction games I have filmed <laughs> <laughs> and it's on my YouTube but it's like unlisted or whatever, but you can go in and watch all of them. And there's like, we threw wall balls over the pull up rig. Just that's awesome. Rid- but you didn't even squat. You just threw the ball over. <clears throat> there was some other stuff. It was cool. It was a cool event. But then you go, you start working with max and it seems like there was a period of time where you were doing maybe one competition. Yeah. Year. The, his whole thought was focus on like getting the training where it needs to be, getting the fitness where it needs to be. And then worry about the competition aspect. And in hindsight, looking back, uh, 
I'm not sure if that was the best approach for myself. Um, I like to submerge myself in those situations. Even like when I grew up racing motocross, like I wanted to race all the time and I want the pressure. Yeah. And I understand that in the CrossFit space, that it's a little different, that you need to get stronger. You need to get better and focus on these priorities. But I also feel like that affected the way I like approached workouts, how I used to compete more or less. So yeah, I don't know if it was like the best thing. I think I probably should have done it more often and just kind of gone against what he said, not like in a bad way, but just now looking back, I'm like, there was a few that I wanted to go do. And he's like, I just don't think you should like it. Just, I don't think it's right. And I think in the moment I was like, all right, I agree. And I'm a hundred percent on board, but I also felt like for my own self and competition and getting that like fire and excited feeling is just kind of like, it's almost like kind of like dwindled out yeah. to a degree. You're also in the minority or really anybody that's at the games level. You're so good that you don't need to like have like this perfect training structure. Like you're always yeah. getting better. And you're, even if you don't do something for a long time, you still have that talent we see a lot of young athletes that come on board or are in one of our online programs that they're competing like every single weekend. And the problem with that then is that they need to get better at, let's just say muscle ups and they're not yeah. working on it. And they go to the competition that has 30 in it and they can't do the workout and then they get frustrated and they're not getting better. Yeah. But, well, and I think what happened in 2011 to what the competitions are now oh, for is sure. a completely different ball yeah. game. Um, a little like, bit. yeah, like none of that <laughs> is the same. And it's hard to even compare that. But like when you first started, like the workouts weren't nearly what they are today. The skills aren't what they used to be. Like it was more just like you could have the random raw strength. You have some just pure CrossFit is really all it was back then where now it's like you have swimming, you have biking, you have higher skill gymnastics, you have all these other things that are now added in that changed what it was back then. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think now, for younger kids coming in with a coach, getting that like base level of understanding how you should move, what you should train. Like that's really important for sure. And I think a lot of people just want to follow the crowd, but that's not going to get you where you want to be at the end. So you have Madrid. Are you planning on doing any other competitions in the off season? Uh, well, I originally was going to do rogue was kind of the plan. So after, uh, I finished the games, I was like, okay, so top 20 was like the next, you, or in the year past was the way they invited out. So you got top 20, they were able to go. And so then that'd be sick if you did rogue, let's go. Yeah. So then, <laughs> so then they put out the qualifier. I, I'll be honest. I didn't want to do the qualifier. I, well, well, you're skipping a step. So then they said it's not top 20 this year. Yeah, correct. They did. Yeah. yeah. Then no, or I asked no, if he got an invite and he said no at that point. And so then it was like, son of a gun, we're going to have to be doing the qualifier. Um, and then that punk ended up getting one. <laughs> so mad. Uh, Wait, he got one? Yeah. So I, uh, I'm assuming someone else in the top 10 said they wouldn't go. So oh, then it oh, backfills oh. to 11th and then 12th and so on and so forth. So then nice. he Congrats, ended up. Noah. Yeah, good job. <laughs> Glad you didn't have to do the Noah qualifier. Noah will be in Austin. <laughs> uh, so then ended up doing the qualifier. My goal kind of going into it was just have fun. Don't really like think about it too much. Literally just go in, set up the camera and kind of start. And that's essentially what I did, which backfired tremendously. And yeah. So what was the issue? So I did all the workouts. <clears throat> I'll be honest. I briefly skimmed over like the rules and what they wanted, where they wanted the camera set up, all of that. Um, come to find out. Tell us the, why you did that though. Cause I just wasn't overthinking it. And if I qualified, I qualified. And if I didn't, I right. didn't, you but I wasn't, in, your heart wasn't in doing this. Yeah. I wasn't like selling my soul out and making this like I have to qualify for rogue. Like that yeah. wasn't, I was like, and I also, just want to do see the workouts like a and basic movement. Like, okay, it's a squat clean. I'm just going to do it. You know, as an yeah, example, like I wasn't, you, you know what a squat clean is. Yeah. And I wasn't overthinking it looking so much. I like saw how far the bar needed to be away. Like those kind of things that you just like look at the graph. But as you read through the rules, there's parts where you have to weigh the equipment, which we've never had to do. Um, the only time we ever did that was during the COVID games when they had, that had judges that were here on site actually do it. But other than that, we've never had to do it. So I didn't really think anything else of it. I saw it and I was like, well, that's weird, but it's real. So when did they ask you to do it? So, <clears throat> so I did the whole, I did all of the events then Sunday. No, no, sorry, sorry. When were they asking the, if you had done it right, when were you supposed to weigh on video? Like at what point in the, in the beginning yeah. or end? I mean, but you have to put it on it a scale. You. Yeah. yeah. You have to oh, right. on a scale, show the barbell, show the plates, everything that's weighed and show that it's actually accurate. Um, and I didn't, I just assumed it was a rogue bar, rogue plates. It would have been fine. Ended up doing all the workouts. Then Sunday night, it was 12 midnight was the like cutoff. I think it was like eight 30. I got an email. It was like, 
uh, your video is rejected. You didn't upload a video. And I was like, well, that's weird. I thought I did. So I went in, looked, I uploaded all of them, but the first one, I was like, okay, so here, uploaded it, put it in. 10 minutes goes by, got another email. And I was like, the video has been rejected. And I was like, well, that's odd. What happened now? <laughs> and then, so I guess because I didn't weigh the barbell, weigh the plates, um, that my video was rejected. And it was like, you have until midnight tonight to essentially go redo it. And I was like, no, <laughs> not I'm not going that. to redo a workout right now at nine o'clock at night, potentially. So then just kind of accepted it. And there it was, there was my answer. I wasn't yeah. going to rogue. So what's the lesson learned here, Travis? Tell lesson all, learned, tell all read the all the directions, <laughs> have your coach or someone else. Well, and I had people ask like, Oh, why didn't max or someone on TTT do it? And I was like, because there was no intent of max was in New York. I didn't, not saying I didn't care, but I wasn't making that like, that's what I was getting focus. at. Like, you weren't it, like gung ho about yeah, I, w I was just like, I want to do the workouts. And if I qualify, I qualify. And if I go or I don't go, I want that decision to be on me. And I mean, technically, I probably would have qualified, but the decision is now made by not filming correctly. And yeah. that's that's not Rogue's fault. That's 100% my fault. I should have read the directions. I should have looked carefully at everything, all the standards, but it just happened. And to be fair, I, I do think that, that you have to have like those super tight standards if everything's no, going to be I a think qualification style like that. I mean, I think it's a way to start to weed out the people that are trying to cheat exactly. and creating hollow yeah. plates and doing all these weird things. And then not saying I deserve a pass by any means. Um, you just assumed I've been to the event every single year. I just finished the games. I'm using rogue equipment, not saying that should be like an automatic, Hey, okay, fine. You're in, you can't, you can't alter our equipment. I mean, your score but, should be a little better if you were using some, yeah, like, yeah, I would, if I won, <laughs> if I took a first on everything, then that's understandable. Wouldn't it be funny if they were like, you have to weigh your plates unless they're rogue plates. <laughs> That'd have been awesome. Yeah. Little advertisement Little, to them. Yeah. I mean, I don't know who does. Now, did have you watch their the plates. Hiller video where he brought this up? No. He mentioned that, uh, he brought up your situation, but that it may have had downstream effects. And I don't know if this played itself out and has been, uh, resolved, but, uh, it may have pushed out Colton Mertens somehow because oh, your, like your scores at, at least at the time of his video were still in there, even though you were out. Yeah. So then all of my ones with the weights are out now. Okay, so they took Because I got, yeah, because I got emails over like the last three days. It was like, this video is rejected. This video is rejected. This video. And I was like, well, yeah, I figured like you should just take them all out. Like yeah. the only one that was valid was the row handstand because there was no weighing no of weight. equipment. <laughs> um, so, but I mean, it's lesson learned. Just be sure to read all the rules. And was it Caroline Provo? She reached out and she was like, yeah, I did the same thing. Um, I think she said a few years ago doing one of their challenge workouts uh -huh. where that I kind of see more because it's like, three minute AMRAP deadlift, right? right? Like if you hollow out something and make it 30 pounds lighter, that's significantly different. How do you pretend though that the weight is heavy? You know, I've always wondered that if someone is faking it, like you gotta be a good at faker. At that point, like just go take drugs if you want to get better. <laughs> exactly. Like stop trying to like cheat the scale of the weights. <laughs> just go take drugs if that's really what you want to do. If you're trying to get that much better and cheat. Like, <laughs> yeah, I agree. All right, let's, let's rewind everything back to the games. Okay. That's what people want to hear. About. <laughs> Sorry. Don't do drugs. We had, a, bad. we had a zing you there with the rogue stuff. Uh, hey, that's all right. Going, going back to the games, just off the top of my head, because I've done this with everyone, I'm interested, yeah. before we dive into your experience, what was your least favorite and most favorite event at the games? Least favorite? Not from the ones you did, but like from a programming perspective, right? Yeah, That's yeah, what you yeah. mean? Like, which ones did you feel like, man, Bosman crushed this, and like, oh, this is totally different, I don't like, or different, and I love it, you know, whatever it may yeah. be for you. I mean, I think there was a variety. I think it was good that there was a change um, of the test, and you could definitely feel that in the entire environment, yeah. um, just based off of looking at the whole weekend itself. Um, I think there should have been more variety, just some more CrossFit. I think, yeah. <clears throat> I think it was almost something Boz has been wanting to do forever. And Dave's probably always been like, no, you can't do this. Right. You're not allowed to, <laughs> I'm programming kind of, I have the higher power here. Um, and it almost felt like it was more of a full programming shift of how it's ever been programmed before way more gymnastics, definitely his background. Um, which I think was cool to take it, but I also think they got away from what we're good at. And I think they just try to keep leveling it up and leveling it up and making it harder and harder, which I think is okay, but you're also taking away what we're really good at. And that's yeah. like, let us showcase what we're actually good at for TV. Don't make us sit there and do pegboards where like people are failing and their legs are straight and we're trembling and we look like we don't even know what we're doing. Or you're doing crisscross double unders on national TV. Like, with just your own make, rope, not yeah, even giving a standard like, rope. Yeah. Yeah. And clearly you knew people that have been practicing it or having some idea, like people randomly showed up with beaded ropes. Right. 
like how many of you are carrying beaded ropes around in your bag and you just happen to find out that- Well, that's always person. been the question is how to, who's, but who like, knows the workouts before? Yeah, I mean, I yeah. saw videos, I'm not gonna say who it was, but I saw videos beforehand of someone doing crisscross double unders and then the video was gone. Yeah. So then- They took it down? I believe so. Um, so then it's like, okay, so this person <laughs> magically found out about it. Right. Um, so it's just kind of a bummer that like, oh, I'm randomly practicing this crisscross double under it magically disappears. And then at the games, oh, Hey, look, here's crisscross double unders. Um, but I think they got away a little bit of just like CrossFit, like just let us show. And I think that's almost every year. Like, sure. I think they just let us showcase what we train all year. Yes. You can challenge us. Yes, you can make things more difficult. I don't have a problem with that. But I also think sometimes they try to keep leveling it up, leveling it up, leveling it up versus like, let us just showcase. Would you have been okay with those things that they were, uh, you got them well ahead of time so you could have practiced them? I mean, I think you if, still you gave, if you posted the crisscross double under a week before, like, okay, I can bring a different rope because I know that's a different rope. I would never use a speed cable rope for that. And then just like the amount of people that would show up and at least have the skill or the understanding, you don't have to say when it's going to come out. You don't have to say if it even will come out, but like, Hey, here's a hint that this movement might come up. Why don't you guys pr try to practice it? So at least when you get there, like you don't look ridiculous. I gotcha. But you're saying that, um, you keep saying like, let us just do the things that we're good at. Yeah. Um, but pretending that they gave you that three months ahead of time and you got good at it. I feel like even, even if it? you posted it a week before. Okay. So your I issue is fine. Yeah. That you want to just do crossfitty stuff. It's just, no. I don't want to do stuff. I don't know yet, but it's to, not even that. I think it's more, even when you have it as it's being televised to everybody in the world, right? When you're turning on something, you want to watch people that are like executing, doing what they're, you want to see I masters of the strong man, literally <laughs> pick up a yoke with nothing on it and just walk. I'd be like, well, that's kind of weird or like stumble every two feet. That's kind of essentially what we were doing. Like I crisscross, I do one, I mess up. I crisscross, I do one, I mess up. I crisscross, I mess up and do another one. And it's like, so you did a pegboard and then you just stood there. Like, and I think that's kind People of People want to see excellence and you're not, right, we're and, not delivering excellence in the sport because no. we're doing a bunch of random stuff. We, we've talked about that in the past. Yeah. I, I feel like the, the, the community wants to see you guys fail just like, because they're doing it. So like, yeah. it, you know, what do we like when we're, watching golf, someone, a pro shank the ball is kind of funny because you're like, wow, they're so good, but they still yeah. do what I do. So I think people kind of love it, but at the same time, they can relate to it. Exactly. At the same time, it, excellence is much more entertaining to watch. And that will, that's what will gravitate people that are outside of the sport. So to your point, yeah. I, I agree that it's, you, we need more things that you guys are training all year. And the other thing yeah. too, that I think is weird is if they continue to put out novel movements, are they actually slowing down the progress of the best athletes in the world? Because now you have to worry about another 20 or 30 things that yeah. it's just like, these are okay. Do crisscross double unders and waste 20 minutes of, of time every single day, as opposed to getting better at like the most basic movements in the sport. Yeah. I think that's just kind of how it will keep going. And yeah. I think they should just, the simplest thing you come out with a list, hear the movements, <clears throat> you post that in advance. I would love that. I would and absolutely it love be it. 300 movements. It doesn't matter, but like, at least like these are what's on the list. Yep. And then if you train it, you train it. If you don't, you don't, but at least you know, it's out there. Um, so did you expect that style of training or hold on, excuse you me, didn't testing? answer the first question? No, I'm going to get, I'm I'm get, get back, getting to, back to, okay. to like, I'm what get did I like? It. What did yeah. I not like? That was a long kind of beat it off. Did you expect that before like going to the games? Obviously you probably talked to Max or just kind of thought yeah. of yourself. Did you I mean, think I kind of like figured there'd be some higher skill gymnastics, just knowing his background. Yeah. Um, but I didn't think it would be like that. Right. Um, I think it was pretty cool to show that the gymnastics can level up. I think sure. the, adding the pirouettes into the handstand ramp, that kind of stuff, like that was a good thing to bring in. Um, but the little things of like the 10 pistols on the one leg, if your heel hit, then you had to start back at zero. Like <laughs> I get, you have to execute and be flawless and something like that. But like, if you already trip and get a no rep, you're already behind Like yeah. to take away 10 other reps. I just did that just seems kind of odd that then it's like, okay, well then I might as well stand here, wait till the time cap instead of doing 20 more pistols because right. I'm going to be done. Um, my, my understanding is, is that, that he was very proud of that workout and you're yeah. going to see more of that in the future, which, you know, I think is a mistake, but also like there are people again that love it. And, yeah. and those that maybe executed really well, they they have a different point of view than you because they're like, yeah. Oh, look, and I, I don't can think I executed this. bad on that. It was more just, uh, a little thing on the pirouette that cost me of like right. not finishing. Yeah, you were flying through so that. So I think it's it's one of those things that I don't have a problem with the high stake events. I think those are cool because the, the crowd excited. Yeah, me like too. there's a lot of on the edge. You're like oh, who's gonna win? And then you see the person 
fall on the stairs and then it's like, okay, well then person second catches up and wins. And like, that's cool to see. Um, I think it's just the little things like you don't have to make them 10 unbroken. Like if the heel hits, it's a no rep. That's fine. Then you're back at nine, like to take away nine other reps that I just did just seems odd. Right. And um, high stakes in every other sport are still the things that they're always practicing. So like what, what's high stakes in the Olympics is they're doing a hundred meter dash. Well, everyone's still doing the same thing. It's still high stakes. Yeah. You just have to execute the same thing you're practicing all the time in football. You got to run your route perfectly. That's still yeah. high stakes, but they do that all the time. So again, going back to that point, you're, you're showing excellence and that's why they have a hundred million viewers in the Super Bowl. Yeah. And if you want CrossFit to go from a hundred thousand viewers to a million and then to a million and a half, two million, you have to have people that are doing excellent things. And I've said this a thousand times, but to kind of like in this point, I have friends that don't watch CrossFit that watch part of it because they know that I'm in it. And they're like, these guys, they're the best in the world. That's the question I get. I'm like, yeah. I, I promise you that that movement is much harder. The handstand push up was a perfect example. They're like, yeah, why are they failing? I'm like, this is way harder than it looks. I promise you. And yeah. I pointed out to Will, Will, I said, Will, I've, I've done a hundred handstand pushups with him. He did it in four and a half minutes. And you know, obviously he crushed that workout, yeah. but it's like, look how hard he's still making it look like it. it people don't understand that. Morad? Yeah. Will Morad. Sorry. Yeah. And so I think it varies, but to get back to the question, probably the event I like the most would probably be the, the capital just based off of not how I perform, but the actual whole experience of yeah. it. What was that like going up the stair? I mean, there's no one around you, so maybe it was different for you, but like the crowd, yeah. the, just the, the look of the I event. mean, so going into that event, I really had, I didn't know how I would do. I knew we've worked a lot on running in the off season. So I was kind of like the run should be good work. You're running yeah. for a while. Right. Um, and then pig flips, we've done a lot of practice. So when I got to the pig, it like felt smooth from the beginning. So I was like, okay, we're already starting off on a good foot. And then I saw Brent took off right before me. <clears throat> and then within like 50 meters, I pretty much just passed him. And I was like, all right, the whole time, don't look back. Doesn't matter who's behind you. Just find your cadence and like settle in. And that kind of just seemed like what I did and just took off. I never looked back once, never wanted to know where anybody was. I did have a random pedestrian on a bike ride by. I was like, man, you're so far ahead. And I was like, cool, man. <laughs> like nice. Just running by. I was wondering if anyone said anything. To yeah. You. Some people were like, great job. But I'm like, I have no clue yeah. where people were. And it spares a seemed large gap <laughs> pretty far. Well, we I had just Rob from the gym drove past you. <laughs> yeah. So he I wasn't had trying no to clue. find you. He was driving to the Capitol and was like, Hey, there's Chad. Yeah. I had no clue. That was actually him. I just saw like some random guy reaching his arm out the window in a Tesla. I was like, man, is this guy got like self driving mode on? Like this is always like, keep it up, do it for the dads. And I'm like, thanks man. <laughs> and then just keep running. And then he keeps yelling and then come to find out later. I think Chris or someone told me, he was like, yeah, that was Rob. And I was like, Oh, didn't know. Um, but then once you, it was cool that you would go through kind of like the city. Then there's like this hill as you're going up and then like, you just see people everywhere. How steep was that? Not the, it was way steeper yeah, than that's what, what people I, thought. That's what everyone said is it's like so much steeper than it looks yeah. on the camera. Yeah, Which it was part? at the uh, very end of the run, but well, still as running. you're like going when up to pick up the, the backs, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, that hill like was very flat the entire time. Right, and then right. you get there and you're like, Huh. Well, you could see the second heat, especially because all those guys were bunched up and they were, yeah. they were moving what looked like a lot. They were laboring more than you were at that point, but they turned that hill and then they, they all just like, it was a dramatic slowdown. <laughs> you could see it on their faces that they just were like grinding yeah. to get it up. Uh, if you've ever been to my gym, we have a hill outside <laughs> yeah. of our 400. Is it like that? Kind of like that. Just a little steeper. Wow. And it's just kind of annoying. Like it's just kind of there. So for me, I was like, well, this is fine. Um, when you finally came in contact with the crowd, tell us what that was like. Yeah, I would say like the point of when it like really hit me of the crowd was when after you dropped the two sandbags and then went down, there was just rows of people yeah. <laughs> everywhere. Like it gives me goosebumps now, like thinking about it because there was people everywhere. And it's it's not like you would see that or expect that when you came around the corner because I was like, I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. And then just people were yelling and screaming. And then you run down and pick up the bag and you turn around and like, as I'm turning, I look back and I was like, man, it's, it's just like a really cool yeah. photo. Like the one photo, I think, um, <clears throat> Mike got it where it's sort of me just carrying it on my back. I think I posted when I asked those questions yesterday of it literally is just like me. And then you just see all the people staring and it's just like, that was a really cool moment of like, all right. Now it's time you go finish right yeah, here. I was um, watching with Habdo and you were so far ahead. I was like, he's going to have all this moment to himself. So rather than share the crowd, you know, cause I knew as soon as you kind of emerged, it was going to go. Ah. Yeah, it was, I was like, cool. man, that's going to be good for Trav. Yeah. So then I think, 
I dropped it at the one point you had to drop it and then switch it to the front. And then I carried it up three flights, dropped it once, carried it up the final two. But just like the final two, like hearing people yell, it's like, it was a pretty cool moment. Yeah. I've wondered this after you went, I was like, man, he was really far ahead. There are only going to be maybe one or two guys that could be competitive with him. And of course those few guys yep. were close, right? <laughs> do you think it would have been different? Like, would, do you, would you have passed those two guys or what would Don't it have been like? Yet. Don't answer yet. Is this a question that I, you have? I want me and you to go back and forth. What do you think? Do you oh, think he okay. did better as being in heat one or do you think he would have so, been better in heat two? Travis is going to give a different answer than this. I think he probably would assume that they maybe pushed a run, but I w watching them, Travis looked much more comfortable on the run and you obviously found your cadence. You felt comfortable, but I think if he was with that group, he would have been able to pick up his cadence even faster and started ahead. And then tr there's no one in the sport that's better than carrying a heavy bag than Travis. I think that if you were in that moment where you guys all put the bag down two flights below where that line was, cause you guys were there about yeah. the same time that you would have been able to pick it up a little bit faster. And Tell me if I'm wrong here, but you also took a pretty long break on the farmers. What, what are those bags called? Yeah, what are they called? Bag. Carry <laughs> bags? Jerry, what Jerry, Jerry, yeah, oh, so Jerry bag. the biggest thing with that is I didn't know where I was supposed to drop it. I thought it was further down the road. I didn't see the judge off to the left and like the little yellow line on the road. Yeah. I didn't see that. So when I came around, I set it down once right after the, or right before those like first two steps, carried it again, set it down again and then carried it the third time. And it was like 15 feet in front of me was the finish. Right. I didn't know it was there. But you put him down. And it was I like put him down. It's about a 20 second break. Right. Cause I went back and actually watched the event yeah. to see what it was like. Then realized I picked it up and I was like, drop, drop. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me in my head. I'm like, why Where you, you could have easily carried, carried the rest the of the way. Yeah. That but saved you I 20 seconds. You had to go down and turn because they said it was 200 meters and it just seemed excuse me, shorter than that. So yeah. there wasn't like an obvious line. Like a big floor. There was, but, one, but the first I was person. the first one. So there's no other bags there. There's no other, yeah. like it was just cones, and the right? Judge is off to the side. Like I just yeah. didn't see, I wasn't really paying attention. Like I'm just kind of like head down we walking know. and then <laughs> set it down. And then <laughs> after that, then he's like, here, here. Yeah. And I was like, so do you agree so, with so my, so my answer would be, I think he still wins and, or at least it would have been a, an awesome race for you three to the finish. No, 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 no. The question cool. is, do you think he wins? Yes. The workout yes. Outright? I think he wins yeah. the workout outright by that? 10 seconds. Cause I, I mean, went the I, other way. I thought that you got, but I don't know shit about shit. So I thought you got like a, a good kick being that far ahead and you were riding that. Yeah. I mean, it definitely Whereas was a nice with high of like, I think for one, it was, great that I finally got some media and they had to focus on me because I was the only one out there. So they had to put the camera on me, <laughs> which was great because it's been years that that has never happened. So from that side, I think it was honestly good yeah, that it I was just me. But then on the <laughs> other hand, I do think I would have won because that break there and then the break before the final set, I honestly thought about carrying the bag the whole five yeah. flights. That would have been I was such like, a like, monster move right yeah, there. Yeah, and I was like, you're pretty far ahead. Just like a quick break here just to like really make sure you're good. So like, I think in the moment I could have just kept carrying yeah. it. Um, That's the thing is like, you never push yourself the same amount and maybe you, you end up blowing up. Like that can also happen in yeah. like that. But when you're that far ahead, you're like, I'm going to put it down for a second so I can make sure I don't drop it yeah. on the stairs or something like but that. But I think it was, I executed it really well. I think it was, they had each other to push and push the cadence. And I think it was like 15 seconds was the difference. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't say that I, I'm pretty sure I would have won, but yeah. I can't, you can Speaking always of say air that time. You got the whole footage to yourself for that first heat. Did your, uh, did your boys watch? Oh, at home? Yeah. No, I think they, they were don't in school. Ever get to see yeah. you. I think they were in school. They didn't watch oh, like the replay. That, that was the first one that. Friday. That was the first one. Event. Yeah. So they were in school. They so I don't know if they've watched it. Oh, some fans, they turned out. <laughs> <laughs> you have that always like yeah. save it, download it or whatever. Yeah, you can. It was cool. Cool yeah. moment. Um, one just real quick on that note and we can kind of finish this. It, Roman was super impressive with his running. Did you expect him to be yeah. that good? Yeah. Oh man. I mean, his engine just yeah, in general just on machines and running has he, always his been running good. technique was not even very when good. we I've competed with him in Dubai. That's right. And he was always a good runner and good on machines. Yeah. Uh, just excellent on the machines. So from that side of things, I knew he would probably it. be a pretty good runner, even if it's not like the most graceful, but like, He's got an engine to back it yeah. up. It was just impressive because he looked a little heavier than everyone else, yeah. but he just, I mean, super smooth. So, uh, that was a fun race. It would have been more fun though. If you yeah. were in that second heat. Yeah, I, I, think I get, so. I get it all. Like, but it's, it's cool to have that time. It, right? Yeah. So that was your favorite event. What was your least favorite event? <laughs> 
trying to think of what all we did. Um, don't think too hard. Yeah, I'm just trying to remember them. <laughs> if you want to be honest, I don't remember all of them. Um, how about the this? Moment. Which one were you most frustrated with? Like, did you oh. feel like there was a couple that you just like <laughs> bombed on? Yeah, I mean, for me, it, it's I hit a very mental roadblock at this games. If I'm being completely honest, after the second event, um, what was the, that? The pegboard one. Okay. On the first one on the bike, we've worked a lot this year on cramping and making sure that doesn't happen. First event, go out, do the toes to bar, go out on the bike, come back off the bike, hamstring cramps on the chest to bar. Then my hand starts to rip at rep 20 on the chest bar, which I haven't it's ripped in years. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, well, this is weird. Like I can already feel it bubbling up underneath. And I was like, man, you have literally 12 other events. Like you can't rip your hand to shreds now. Like you just can't. <clears throat> Get on the second bike when I hop off both calves, both hamstrings, full seas as I'm like running across the finish line. If you go back and watch, it probably looks like I'm yeah. something's <laughs> actually legitimately wrong. Um, but that happened. So that was really frustrating to like start the whole competition off that way of like something I've like worked really hard on in the off season to make sure it doesn't happen. Did anything change like in prep leading up as far as nutrition supplementation? Yeah, I mean, I was just on a lot of potassium, sodium, yeah. making and like I never had cramping issues right. this, this summer which usually I will like experience it happening a few times and it just wasn't. And I was pushing pretty hard. Um, so I don't know if it was the stress or whatever else added up once we got there. So then that happened. The second event on the pegboard, I go down on the first set on my second rep, go up for my third. And one of the pegboards, like the pegs actually comes out. So I grip really tight with my one arm and I feel my whole hand just rip from the rip. <laughs> like the whole thing. Yeah. But yeah, that was just like a blood blister in right. one little but spot. <clears throat> grabbing the peg ripped i mean deep shreds. deep i've been told that your whole spot. palm was gone it was ag aggressive um finish it come down and i look at it as i'm going to grab my jump rope and i was like oh my god what <laughs> just happened um there are razor blades on the peg <laughs> yeah just finish the handstand walk get over and i go to the um medic and i was like look just give me tape. I need something to put on. He was like, what did you just do? <laughs> and he's like, what lane were you in? We need to go clean that. And I was like, well, yeah, it's this one. <laughs> so then they end up giving me tape. I wrap it up, go through the next set. And I think that's also what made like the pirouette weird, like just the position. Cause yeah. in the back, I na nailed the pirouette every single time. And then when I got out there, I didn't even know how to do it kind of a feeling. And then it like happened in that. Then I had a judge literally miscount <laughs> on a workout. I was at 16. Then when I set it down, she goes 13. And I'm like, okay, that doesn't make sense. But it's like in the moment, you can't do anything. Yeah. You go to the next part. I set it down at five. I pick it up. She says seven. And I was like, what are you doing? Like you're throwing me off. And I'm like, I get you're giving me reps <laughs> and we're losing reps. But like, this is not, I'm getting thrown off. So just a bunch of little things honestly happened all weekend um, that I was pretty disappointed across the board. Um, that, how much did the hand play? I mean, I, I think it was just the first few events were not executing the way and it's on me. I need to be able to snap out of it, but there was times like Max had talked to me and like, I just, I was like shutting down. Like my, I went almost like into like, we've worked a lot on the mental aspect, a lot of on these other things, but it's almost like it knocked me right off. And I went back to like how I started just like self-analyzing, criticizing myself, saying I'm a piece of, like, I don't think people understand the mental aspect of like what the games is like, and you can do your workouts here and smash it. And if it's in training, there's no doubt that I would, if it was in here and we just did those workouts, like on a regular day, there's no question in my mind of like where I think I would finish. But then for some reason, the stress, the, and that's competition. That's just is what it is. But the mental aspect of that punched me in the face pretty hard. And it was very, very, uh, emotional of a weekend yeah. from so, that so side. How do you like, what are you doing to correct that moving forward? Yeah. I mean, I continue to working with a mental coach and then figuring out how to reach out to some other people to actually get some like actual help of trying to have an understanding of like why it's happening in these high pressure stress situations and how I can actually correct it. And I think that's why I was like, well, maybe I should go to Madrid and put myself in that situation again and try to get more comfortable with whatever that feeling is and expose it. Yeah. Um, so then I think a lot of it is just not having expectations of finishing a certain place. So in the past I've been like, once I get to the games, it's like, okay, you're there, set a goal, but like not really pushing for that or whatever it is. And 
this year I felt the fittest I've ever felt mentally, physically. And then you go in and then these first few events happen. And then you're like, Oh no, like this is not what you anticipated. That um, had an impact on you. Cause we've all talked on multiple episodes, how you were like a whole different person this year. It felt yeah. like, I mean, I, I felt that way, just confidence, the mental side of things, the way I approached workouts, how I was digging into workouts. Like I just didn't feel like there wasn't a doubt in my mind that I wouldn't be like top five. Like, yeah, that was guaranteed in my mind. I was like, I just feel I'll like go and take top five. The expectations can be like the ruiner of all good things. You know what I mean? Like it's, and I it's such a dangerous game. That is a hundred percent what happened. Cause it made me not enjoy anything about this game. Yeah. If you want me to be honest, well, I hated probably every minute of being there. It, it makes me wonder if it's almost better to have like a little, a couple of bad training weeks where you're questioning it. And then you, you lower yeah. the expectations before the games. And then you go out there and you, you over exceed. And then yeah. you're, you're happy about where you're at and yeah. whether that's a placement thing or just like you felt like you executed better, whatever it may be. It, it It's so, it's funny. I think about not to always talk about golf, but Tiger Woods <laughs> always talks about this. He said when he would have bad warmups, he'd get excited about the rounds because then he wouldn't put the expectations on himself. And then he said he'd have days. Come where on, great I need Start sucking and training, man. <laughs> yeah. man. That's a. It just to to Chris's point. You did have. I mean, it was probably like. Let's let's rewind a little bit, actually. Yeah. So the season uh, after last year's games, you had a couple knee issues that were going on and some other things. So you yep. actually took quite a bit of downtime. There was. Uh, yeah, some knee issues, yeah. some kidneys and liver not functioning right. right some breathing. Yeah, the issues, breathing issues. All those things. CT scans. Some longest other stuff off stuff. season of all time. It yeah, really yeah. was. You weren't yeah. doing, I mean, we were playing a lot of golf, we were hanging out, doing other stuff. And like, you just, when I was golfing into, roughly four times a week, I was like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm I, saying. Yeah. And so you did Wada Palooza and you were pr pretty healthy there. At least you, you guys crushed it. Semi healthy. Yeah. yeah. yeah at then, that point it was more like, okay, is my knee going to withstand and what's actually going to exactly. happen? And then we literally just had fun is ultimately. Yeah. And I think that's why we all did so well. It was like, right. we're literally just there having a good time. And I think that led to us having such a great weekend but I also think that's the same mindset I need to learn to carry into like by yourself individual side of things. So that's literally what the goal of trying to go to Madrid actually is. It's like, it doesn't matter if I win or lose, but I need to find the love and passion that I had when I like originally started. And I think like I've lost that somewhere within this journey of like just putting these pressure expectations. Like I need to perform. That's like what you need to do versus just like, and you need, you do best when you like, don't think you literally just go in, you have fun, you joke around, you have a good right. time. And I think learning to cultivate that is hard because I'm an athlete and I want to compete and I want to win, but putting that pressure doesn't help me do any of those things. And yeah. it's making me have worse experiences, not enjoy it. And then if I can learn to train it, I think it'll be a better experience being there at least. Yeah. Do you, so you got, you go through the open and it was kind of like, I mean, you still, you're so good that you're going to get in the top 10%. So it doesn't yeah. matter. I mean, you're going to be in the top 50 or 100 in yeah. the world, whatever quarterfinals. You had some good workouts and you also had one that kicked you some in the butt. Real <laughs> bad workouts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but then that was the turning point. So yeah. like, it seemed like you, I actually judge you on this workout, the three rounds for time of 30 GHD, 30 pistol, yeah. 10 ring muscle ups or whatever order it was in. Yeah. And I remember that being something that was like, pretty challenging. Just like the, the muscle ups kind of blew yeah. up and you're like, okay, I need to start kicking it into gear here. Yeah. And for those of you that don't know, I, the heaviest I ever got in my life is <laughs> during that point in time, I was two fifteen. Um, how heavy are you normally in like a day, like at the games at two Oh two. Yeah. So you're so 13, pounds. 13 pounds. So literally I had like <laughs> a, a weight vest, a female's weight vest on <laughs> the entire time. And it would be like, I did like five and I was like, I, I need <laughs> no, I remember. Like my, I don't know what's happening. And I think it just kind of, made me snap out of it more or less of like, okay, you can't eat this way. You can't go off four days a week and expect to still be fit and <clears throat> contend. And if that's what you actually want to do, you need to get it together now. Yeah. Um, so then pretty much flipped a switch, made sure my health was good, got all my blood work done again, made sure everything was actually like clear to push forward at that high of an intensity. Then after that, I just mean, there was a like good, like, was six to eight weeks before whenever semifinals happen where Chris talked about this in the last podcast, but those that didn't listen or the podcast that Max and I had, it was like every single training time you were the one that was like different, you know, yeah. like focused, crushing it, beating everybody. And so that led to the expectations you had for the, and then yeah. you crush semifinals. Like you yeah. go out there and like, other than I, I would say the, one the wall ball yeah. event, like if you did 
what you should have done in the wall ball event, then you probably finished first or second. Yeah. And now I did say second. second. Well, I did say yeah, second. well, that's right. So <laughs> you would have finished first or at least been really close. Like the yeah. point spread was tight, right? Yeah. So you do all that and you know that the people you're competing against are some of the best, you know, Brent at, yeah. at um, this at Granite Games. You go into the games with that expectation. So yeah. I wanted to set all of that for people to know, like, I mean, you were on fire. Yeah. It was probably, you looked the fittest that you had. Yeah, I mean, years. I felt the fittest. I, excuse me, definitely just, when it came to training, I just felt like I was on a different level. Um, What's funny is you talk about being in your head at the games and it was the exact opposite. And I mean, that's to your point, but like in training, that was part of what felt different is it felt like Trav was just here out of his head and just fucking crushing. And I think that for me is the sweet spot of trying to find um, the competition, the cameras, the people everywhere, all the not being in my own element, the not all like the little things being thrown off, I think is what, affects that. <clears throat> and then it's like at home, I don't ever have downtime, right? Like I have four children. I'm always doing something. Someone needs something like, so for me to sit there and like, think about things, it's hard because you mean like in the hotel room yeah, afterwards and I'm in a hotel from Saturday to by Sunday yourself, yeah. by myself with multiple hours of downtime, not knowing really what to do. Like I bring a putter, I bring some other things to like, keep myself occupied. But like during that, one of the things I like kind of like non-negotiables is like, don't stay off social media and leaderboarding and stuff. And then honestly, after the third event, something in me just said, screw it. And pretty much just like got out of my head and was so upset. And then like, would just sit there, look at social media, would look at the leaderboard multiple times. And I'm like, it's not going to change from when you go to bed to when you wake up. So what, right. like, what are you looking at? But like, it would just like eat away at me. Like, why are you performing like this? Why are you doing this? Like, you're such a better athlete. You've been performing so much better. And now you're not even showcasing it. Then I go into like self-sabotage. Then I go into like a di downward spiral. Um, even when Max would try to talk to me, like I was just kind of like shutting off, like didn't know what to say. I have nothing to say. I'm more just pissed off. Then we're going to, then every little, little second, anything that could have happened kind of happened where I got a no rep on a dumbbell snatch. Then I did it again. He no rep. So I had to go back to the other side. Then I lost nine seconds on the wall ball dumbbell snatch sprint. And you can't make up nine seconds in the, in that time frame right. of like how we did that. Then it was like, it literally just felt like everything that I like worked on just kind of was like a waste is what it like felt like, like emotionally. How did um, the capital <laughs> impact that? At what point in the week was, I forget what day that, that was. was the first event technically Friday. So it was event. So did that kind of help elevate or was it like, I oh, honestly cool, feel like it it. Was, I, if I'm being honest, no, it didn't help. Like it was cool in the moment doing it. And like looking back, like watching it was like, man, that's a really cool moment to have. But I think I was so frustrated and beat myself up that like I couldn't enjoy really much of it. And that's, you were that way though. I've always been that way. You've always been that way, but, <laughs> but even more so now, because you had in your head that like you had a, a target placing that you want, yeah. like whatever that may be, let's just call it top five. And because how poorly the first event or the first few events went, yeah. you knew that that likely was already out of your control, which, right? yeah. And which it wasn't right. Like if I came back and had some solid no, finishes but in your and, head, it's easy to say that yeah. it is, but like, yeah, it's now looking at it, right? Like there's no way you should have given up. Cause like you still had 11 events to yeah. go. Like you right. could have snapped out of it and fought back and then potentially had your best year yet. And I think it's like this, Oh, you're not there. Like you need to just give up kind of feeling and it's hard and it's something you have to continue to work on. And for me, it doesn't feel like it's the fitness aspect of the games. It's the mental aspect right. that is the grind and the fight that to the people winning and, executing like it's very stressful and I don't think people really understand what mental side of it goes into it and it's definitely made it interesting the last few weeks of just training um Max has given me kind of freedom going into Madrid just to try to find the fun and get the excitement back but it's definitely like I'm not going to say it's easy because yeah. it, every day you like do something like man like that just doesn't feel the same as it did and then you still have these expectations where like, you don't need expectations and so then there's like this constant dialogue of you should be doing this no you should do that where yeah i think i it, mean do you think though you've been doing this now for so many years so that was what your eighth games eighth you, games yeah, yeah and you've been doing it for 11 and a half years something like you yeah. 2011 it 
things are going to change, right? Yeah. Like, or are you not accepting that where it's just like, I don't care how old or how much older I am than maybe the 18 year old that's competing. I'm still just as good. And I'm going to keep going out and trying to pursue my, my dream. Yeah. I mean, I don't think the age thing to me doesn't cross my mind. Right. Um, if you're 25 and I'm 31 or you're 22 and I'm still 31, like that to me doesn't, I think age really is just kind of a number. If you make it up in your head that you want to do something, if I have the power in my mind to kind of self-sabotage myself and dig my own grave that way and not perform, I can honestly change that to where I perform. Like right. I think there was a podcast I was listening to one time with, uh, God, what's the guy's name? Um, dum, dum, dum. Yeah. Dum, something dum. Like Whatever. I just forgot. Um, but explaining how like the mental health of pretty much training. And if you can almost think a certain way and can make yourself almost like sick, you can honestly should be able to change that and make yourself kind of feel sure. better. Yeah. And so it's just having a better understanding of that. And I don't think I, that I'm done. I don't think that that's what I'm accepting. And I want to have an event where I show up and just execute on everyone. And then I walk away happy. I yeah. think for me, it's the walking away and being like, son of a gun, like all of those just, I didn't execute. Would that be the moment you say I'm done or would could that be. just like feed you it into doing be. it more? I don't know. It could be. Yeah. <clears throat> I think for me, I just want, like for me personally, I want to show up and just be like, man, I executed on every single thing. I did everything I possibly could, but on the biggest stage, right? Like <clears throat> the semifinals, those don't, not that they don't matter, but like, that's not the same as showing up for four days and doing 15 events at the games like with that's the best when it matters yeah. like being able to execute there or just be able to contend more and like have that fire and push but i have to figure out where that is and what i need to do to get to that point so i think that's why reaching out to other people sure. and having a better understanding of it could it's just help. It, it's it's funny to me and i said this to max that w from a an unbiased observer and obviously a friend of you. So maybe I am a biased observer. I was going to say, you're a biased observer. <laughs> a very biased, unbiased as far as performance goes. Yeah. I look at your game's performance. I'm like, man, yeah, there are some things for sure that you didn't maybe execute to your ability. Yeah. But still, you go there. That's your eighth games appearance in 11 years. You have four kids, a wife, a business that you're taking care of. And all of these I know are excuses that you could use. But just for, for me, yeah. again, this is me looking at it. I'm unbiased, like, unbiased. Eight, eight, 18th is still like you, you beat half the field and you, you made some mistakes on some workouts where you probably could have easily finished much higher. But yeah. like that's still success. And so it's yeah. like how do how can you still be a competitive like win or die style athlete when it matters, but then be able to pull back and say, Hey, you know what? Like I'm happy with where I'm at. I, I still want to continue to fight and I yeah. want to push, but like almost celebrate the small victories that you yeah. have too. So you're not miserable with every day of your yeah. life, always feeling like you never, you never reach the pursuit that you have. Yeah. If you can, if you can figure this out, Trav, let me know. <laughs> I'm just yeah, saying, I mean, like, I think, we, but we, that's the, I think that's also the culture that we've all like put ourselves kind of sure. in with like social media. That's literally like, Instagram is a highlight reel of everybody's greatest and yeah. best moments and cars and house or whatever it is. And then you're constantly looking at that and you're like, well, man, my life sucks. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> yeah. and that's what I think honestly, everybody does. And I think honestly, when I would see other competitors or see people post, that's why I literally unfollowed most of my competitors because like, I couldn't take looking at all that. Like, it just was like, well, man, this is like messing with my like mind. Right. Um, and so one of the things, even I told Lauren, I was like, I need to get someone to honestly manage my social media because like, I can tell it's having effects on like my own psyche of how I'm like viewing myself and like being semi depressed about certain things, which I think a lot of people probably don't want to talk about, but it, it's uncomfortable, but I honestly can tell it's like taking over to a degree. And so it's being able to have a better understanding of, I think even just honestly like throwing my phone away. Right. I think I'm just grabbing like what you did, like a flip phone. Yeah. Um, those, those the yeah. happiest three months I ever had three or four or five. But months. I think it's like, you get so consumed by, everything that happens externally and not being able to actually look inside at like what's going on. And I think for me, that's where I think I'll try to find like the happiness is like, look internally, find the positives and then, then build on that. Right. Where I think it, it like what you're saying, it's like, <clears throat> yes, I'm top 20 in the world at something like, which is <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. Like small it, victories is, celebrate, <clears throat> right? Like, which is pretty cool. Um, but even when I finished the games this year and came back, I didn't want to come to the gym the whole week because I didn't want to talk to anybody about it. Yeah. Like, because I was upset about the whole weekend itself. Right. Um, so I think it's just being able to have 
There are these tears. Yeah. Being able to take the small wins along the way and actually enjoy it versus self-criticizing, not enjoying the moment of being there. Like you've worked all year to get to this point. Like you need to enjoy this. Like this may never happen again. And every year I've always thought that like, okay, well next year this might not happen. You could get injured. Something could happen. Um, so you need to learn to enjoy it, but that's not, then it's hard because then you're like, oh man, I want to perform. I'm here. Right. And so then you go into like this battle between yourself of like, what can actually happen? What can't. And then even these things you like fear that aren't even real <laughs> play such a big role that then gets you out of your own element, your own zone. So yeah, it's a constant learning process. So in a perfect world, then what does competing look like for you moving forward? In what regard? How, like, how, how, on a how leaderboard long, or what are you yeah, saying? Yeah. So like, how long do you want to compete? Like w- when is enough enough? Uh, do you have no clue on when that's going to be? How often do you want to compete at other competitions like Madrid and Wadapalooza? Yeah. I mean, I think for me, it's more just trying to find the fun in it. And then if I can't find that and there's something else that I feel like is neglecting me from that, or I'm taking away from my family or something in that area, then I would be like, okay, it's time to step back. Or if I stop performing, um, would be probably the simplest one. Right. Um, but I don't think that's the case. Like I still feel very fit and still did qualifiers technically still took top five at for that at rogue still took top 20 in the world. So it's like, I'm still very fit. And that's when I think I'm not performing. Right. Right. So then how can we fix some things to make that actually happen? But I don't want to put a target on when I'm going to be done. Cause then I feel like then I'm already setting a date when it's like, but then if I finish that and I'm like, Oh, well, I want to keep going. Then what was the point of setting that? Like Scott Panchik, like, Oh, I'm going to retire. Then the next individual event, he's at the Wadapalooza <laughs> and then training for the games. Like that to me yeah. makes no sense. Like yeah. if I'm making the statement that I'm done, like I'm, you want to be done. I'm done. Like, I'm not going to most athletes do that though. Think about it. It's not just in CrossFit. Like no, no, all yeah. these other sports, Tom Brady retired yeah. and he's, he's back and now he's getting yeah. a divorce because his wife didn't want him to go back. Like, I mean, Is it's he just, really? I think so. I think that's why he's been out of camp over the last couple of weeks. Oh, so Supposedly, who knows? Yeah. That's what Jordan, you know, she's into all those the details. <laughs> yeah. She yeah. loves that. But yeah, I don't know. I don't want to set a timeline of when yeah. I'll be done. I think, do you think Whenever. you'll actually know though? Or would that be like a hard conversation to have with yourself or with Lauren and others that are on your team? I mean, I think it's going to be hard yeah. regardless, right? Like uh, this is kind of like part of my identity. Yeah. Like I've been doing this for so long. Your whole adult three to life, four right? Yeah. Sessions a day for the last 11 years. Like I, I'm kind it's of your like, life. yeah, like, <laughs> it's your life. Yeah. It's family and CrossFit's kind of like right. together. Um, so I don't know. I mean, it's definitely gonna be a hard decision when I realize it's like, okay, step back. And I don't know if that means continue something of like with HQ and help in some regards to the games. Cause I mean, like I still feel invested and I still love the sport, but at what point that's going to be, I don't know. Yeah. Um, do you, or do you plan on uh, going team at Wadapalooza this year at Wadapalooza? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Cool. That what about the team? What about in the future? Would you ever like, if, if someone came to you, if we had like, the right people. Yeah. You mean uh, a team team, not a, a team. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. A, a, an, an actual, actual CrossFit team. games team. Yeah. Uh, if it was the right people, but I still don't think I'm yeah, you're not ready, ready for, for that. that yet. Um, but I think there's definitely the potential of it being somewhere in the future. But right. when that is, I don't know, but it would have to be with the right people. Yeah. But I also don't want to be continue just to keep going, just to keep going. Right. Um, like if we put a team together, it would you be like, have a lot of we're going to, yeah, we're yeah. going to have fun, but then we're also going there to like go to win. To win. Yeah. Like, well, as that's a the team, most like, right. Like you're, you would put a fun team together that I think everybody would execute and hold each other accountable and that kind of thing. But Speaking of know. team, uh, during the games, did you see, talk, or hang out much with Alexis and Noah? Yes. Julie? Pre- yeah, so me and Alexis, I was pretty much our Uber driver every day to the venue. Um, and then we would always just talk and chat. Adam was always with us and hang out. Um, even in the back, it was kind of like myself, Noah, Julian, the team. Like We all just kind of like hung out together in like our own little... But that's kind of how it is yeah. everywhere, that's right? Like yeah. You have like... Matt's little group, you have Froning's little group, you have everybody's like little cliques amongst everybody. But at the end of the day, I feel like we hung out a decent amount this year compared to the past. She was pretty helpful for you this year. Softball, softball question. Yeah, Yeah. I heard you talk about it. Yeah, no, she's been a really fun addition to the team and she's very good, very fit. I kind of knew in my thought, I 
or in my head, I thought she would take top 10, which she did. Um, and I think she's just going to get better and better. And I think it's going to keep building confidence, but yeah, yeah. She's definitely fun to have here on you feel site. Like she and, was part of your push this year. Like, cause it seemed like y'all were able to go head to head. Yeah. on pretty early. much everything. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of trash talking and she can back it up and then can even dish it out, which is fun. Like if some, if you trash talk somebody and then they get upset, it's like, it doesn't make it fun anymore. Then it's, the worst. Yeah. Then I'm like, well, that's not fun. Like I feel bad now, but then she started <laughs> to joke around and got more comfortable. I feel like she was honestly like a different person than she was the year before when she was here for a while. Yeah. Um, it seems like she just kind of like cracked out of her shell and like became herself. I mean, she and just like built joking. so much confidence. Yeah. And I think helps. for her, it was a, it was a fun push every single day. And I like, pushing against like if it's nowhere or something like we're comparing more where when it's her like yes i'm comparing but like it doesn't mean anything right so i think it's easier to train with a female in that regards she's and still I, a good comparison because wow she's yeah good. and really i mean good. anything handstand gymnastics related just be ready to smoke she's gonna smoke everybody yeah. i mean like, if you're close to her that means you're gonna do really yeah, well then you're gonna do well yeah, yeah we had some deficit handstand push-ups a couple weeks before the games and i was like two reps off and i was like yeah <laughs> i'm gonna win the event <laughs> and it was sad that she did the same deficit as me and noah but i think well her you, and noah tied, did you ever watch like, back the event she won at the games yeah i was watching uh, that oh yeah. were you watching yeah. oh man i mean she it was, just dominated yeah, everyone it wasn't even close yeah I it mean, was a minute just, it was almost a minute it's crazy but I knew when it came out, I was like, okay, well, like yeah, this, this is her event. Yeah. yeah. It, this we is like literally like giving me Karen with yeah. a 30. Right? Like, it's just like, Hey, here's your, Oh, when we get to our Q and a segment, we'll have a good question. Got some good you. ones. All right. Yeah. Well, you want to go ahead and a couple, one other thing I'm interested in just looking back at the season. Cause you're talking about like, obviously, you know, there were ups and downs and then you yeah. turn it on. What's one thing that if you could go back and change that you would change about like your, the, the pursuit that you had, was there a certain time of the year that you would have turned it on earlier or later, anything you would have done mentally to prepare? I mean, honestly, this year I thought I did all the stuff I needed to do at the right time. And I think <clears throat> honestly, having that kind of like off season was a good thing. Like my body just needed yeah. it clearly, like for sure <laughs> liver and kidneys aren't doing what they're supposed <laughs> to clearly like you need some. And I think just to take that, like, downtime and actually relax and go play golf and joke around. I think for me was like a good thing mentally and physically. And then I think the fact of like turning it on after quarterfinals was good. Cause then you, yeah, I probably would have done it a little sooner just cause that feeling in quarterfinals isn't fun. Yeah. Um, to just have a little bit better base of like gymnastics training kind of to a degree, but also that just came down to like an eating thing of just right. like within a couple of weeks, I was like back down to where I needed to be. And I was like, man, that's much better. Um, but I don't know if I would change anything. I mean, I think from the mental side, I did the things I could have throughout last year. I think now I'll kind of reach out to some other resources to try to get some more help to like figure out what's actually psychologically going on when I'm in those kind of environments that I'm just not aware of or not understanding. So then hopefully I can let's do what better. that baseball player did. Let's put you on acid. What acid? You heard who about the baseball no, player who, absolutely who pitched not. a perfect game on acid? No way. Was a, uh, thirty for thirty that's about. Awesome. Oh, I'll have to check it out. Yeah, let's try that. <laughs> um, I think that's banned, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it definitely is. And we could try my, it. My last question is: uh, Does this mean that we can't go on a golf trip this year? <laughs> Are you going to be too focused? No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. I think that's the problem. Give, give me I four was days. Too focused. Give me four days for uh, golf trip. I lost. You I wanna... lost the focus of all the golf. <laughs> that was the problem. I didn't. I didn't go out. It was funny because I. The more we were playing, the more my back was starting to get aggravated. Yeah. That was like the main reason of why we stopped. Well, I stopped leading up to the games. Um, so I was a little bummed because that was kind of like a nice outlet of like not being Just inside doing something the gym. Different. Yeah, yeah, for you sure. You could be a caddy. <laughs> Yeah, you can come out there and carry my bag anytime I have not you want. Carrying your bag anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many balls in my bag because I lose so many that it's yeah. heavy. That's All right, Chris, true. you want right, to tee that up? Into heck yeah, heck no. Nah. Give me yeah, heck. Yeah. What? No. Heck. No. What? Let's jump into heck yeah, heck no, nah, where I bring up some topical news from inside and outside of the community and get the reactions with the heck yeah, heck yeah, heck yeah, maybe yeah. heck no. Heck no, heck no, heck yeah, heck yeah, heck yeah, heck no, heck no, heck no. Okay, heck right. no, nah, heck yeah, man. First topic, Savon, man, you know in uh, school when your teachers would like call on you to read something? Oh, I hated that. Like, that was panic? the worst. That's me right now. I hate having to read a sentence. That but here we go. Don't mess it up. made me terrified. Savon recently had a great interview with Justin Medeiros on his podcast. In it, Justin went in depth on how Ellie Turner went from training partner 
to partner partner dating your training partner yeah. heck yeah or heck nah <laughs> for myself i'm gonna say heck nah <laughs> yeah. i like the separation of going home to a wife that doesn't care so much about all the fitness and as boston said doesn't like working out whatnot but <laughs> <laughs> just kidding but i think it's more it's a nice balance i mean i think sometimes too much of one thing can not be helpful. So I'm going to say heck nah. Yeah. I'm going to also say yeah. heck nah for those reasons. And then also like what happens when they break up, you know, like who's, who's getting kicked out of the gym? Um, I have a guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a guess as well, but yeah, I think that could yeah. be a dangerous Well, game. hopefully that doesn't happen. They seem no, no, like I a know. good couple. Right. I yeah. didn't mean that. I'm not I'm throwing sorry. shade on that. I just wondered what y'all thought was. I think for myself, I'd say no. I mean, I think at times it would be cool where you're like, man, yeah, you guys like working out together. Like, I mean, shoot, Brandy and Mike do it on a team together and it's impressive, but they're also not training together all the time. Yeah. I think that they're also, you still need like that me time. And I feel like if you're constantly together in the gym and then you're constantly together outside and then you're back in the gym, there just needs to be some separation. So hopefully they have some separation. I'm sure they do. All righty. Let's see here. Ben Patrick, AKA knees over toes guy put out a five part YouTube series, giving exercises for CrossFit athletes that they can add into their training to improve and bulletproof their knees. Adding knee specific work into your CrossFit training. Heck yeah. Or heck nah. Heck yeah. All about helping the knees over here. I mean, I feel like I had a lot of knee issues going into last year. This year, st it's jumped to the other knee <laughs> so, <laughs> from one to the next. one to the other. So anything specific that you've touched on that's helped you a lot of his stuff, a lot of isometrics, tempo squats, just slow and control hold a lot of pretty much everything he does reverse sled drag. I mean, just the basic tendon nice. strength. So you're into it. Uh, Heck no, I'm just kidding. Uh, really? <laughs> Come on, Fuck man. Those yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have bad knees. Yeah. Uh, no, his stuff is, is actually pretty good. I, there's some other things. I mean, they're so simple that someone doesn't need to sign up and, and do his program, but I will say that he's done such a good job. You should sign up and, it's all and give good. him some money. It's yeah. I, I, I love what he's done. He basically has taken stuff that people have used for the last, you know, three or four. I mean, nothing's new under the sun, right? So He's just yeah, he regurgitating it. Yeah, but uh, his programs are great. And the other thing too is he has made like a massive empire with that. You know, he went from like 5,000 followers at one point four like years ago million to millions and now Don Rogan and, and other places. So good for him. And again, I love his stuff. It's so simple. The way he does his Instagram is yep. awesome. And the cool thing too is like people are actually buying into it and they're getting out of pain, which yeah. is really nice. Cool. So heck yeah, man. All right. And then those were uh, kind of training related. We'll do our non-training related one. Um, so HBO recently came out with the Game of Thrones spinoff, House of the Dragon. Heck no. Nah. We, we are now in the age of the never ending franchises. Heck yeah or heck no. Nah? Heck no. Nah. Heck no. Nah. I, yeah, no one ever does it well. The only series spinoff that has done it well was Better, Better Call, Call Saul. Saul. I mean, the, the way that what? they did Better, Better Call, Call Saul. Saul. There was a spinoff that was better than the original show. And I mean, and can you name another one? That's it's just better? very rare. Like think about movie sequels. Like, that's what you I'm got saying. Back to the Future we were 2, talking about you got Terminator morning. 2, then what? We, we were talking about it this morning with Pirates of the Caribbean. Like the yes. first couple ones are great, but it's like National they just, Treasure. They, they keep the question adding is, is them. Which, which franchise or movie has a sequel that's better than the first? I gave you two, Back to the Future and uh, Terminator 2. What else has... No, but most of them are terrible. Like you right. said, Royal Car uh, Caribbean, uh, Royal Caribbean. That was Royal the cruise you yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> Royal Caribbean. Pirates of the Caribbean uh, one was way better. That's than what I'm saying. Thing. It was okay. way, the, almost every single spinoff or sequel is right. way worse. Yeah. Matrix but now was they way just worse. Milk the shit out of these. Things. Yeah. They need to stop. Yeah. It's cool. a different movie. The star Wars. Oh, awful. Whoa. You know what I mean? Whoa. So, uh, Whoa. And I think the, the season just got worse and worse with game of Thrones. Anyhow, what, what about walking dead? They're still How going they with still that going? show. They're just now ending. <laughs> I've never, like, I've never show became it. unrelevant like either. two I've seasons in. It. Yeah. The first oh. season though, everyone loved. They had yeah. like 20 million viewers. Yeah, they every, should do episode. a documentary about how that fell apart <laughs> because the world was all like engaged with it. Yes. And then everyone was like, nah, never mind. They're still making money. I mean, if they're doing series over series. Oh my God. All right. Let's move into our Q and A. Q and A. But that's okay. Remember, there are no stupid questions, just stupid people. <laughs> that was actually pretty good. All right. Con <laughs> Papas, please. I think I said that right. If you were to stop competing tomorrow, what movement would you never do again, Trav? Mm, never do again? If you're not competing, what are you not mm. doing anymore? Probably thrusters. 
I'm interested. No, you would uh, one I million would. Yeah, percent do thrusters. But I would, I would do everything. It would like, be what like movement would I not do? Pistols. pistols? Oh yeah, pistols. Yeah, pistols. pistols. Maybe a bunch of GHD. Yeah, like doing hundred GHDs ah, like, in a session. I like GHDs. You would do a hundred. Hi, Brandon. Yours? Pistols. It would be hundred percent. Well, I'm not competing, so yeah, I don't do Brandon pistols. doesn't squat below parallel. <laughs> yeah. So no. pistols. I can squat to a box, man. Well, if you were a competitor and you stopped, lap yeah. pull down. It'd be pistols. <laughs> yeah, either the lap pull down machine. It would 100% be pistols. I wouldn't do them. All right. CMART923. Do you watch the CrossFit games or other major comps streams after you compete to analyze your performance? Yes. I usually go back and watch most of them um, if there was actually any media or coverage. But yeah, for the most part, I'll go back and watch most of them and just see and watch. And then if not watch myself, see what other people are doing well and kind of analyze that. Cool. And the last question, the last I'm going to toss this one to Brandon first, but it's for Trav. So you're going to answer for Trav oh, and he okay. can answer for Trav. Just what I wanted. So he's answering for me and you then I'm answering it. for myself. Yep. Okay. All right. Matt mess 21. If you could write a workout for the CrossFit games that you could win, what would it be? Not 150 wall balls. So Brandon, what is a workout you could write that Travis would win? Can it have wall balls in it? Like what? Sure, but it yeah. just can't be carried. Okay, so it'd be like you know, 200 double unders, 150 wall balls, 200 double unders, 100 wall balls, 200 double unders, 50 wall balls. And he, I would win that. He would win that by a mile. <laughs> yeah. I'd say if not, add some rowing in there. Oh, yeah. yeah. She's even even better for yeah. you. Yeah. So if you had like, I, there was an open workout, row, double under, wall ball. Um, Might have nice. been muscle ups at the end of it um, that I, like one, and then they took away because they said a no rep no, or something. You had a couple of those. I've had a couple of those. The but deadlift one, I judge you. They, yeah. no, they gave you a couple of no reps, yeah. and then Fraser ended up winning, which yeah. was, yeah. Well, don't make me start. That was just absolute yeah. bull. But I'd probably say something. Road double under wall ball would be something I would win. What about it? What if it was a run double under? Wall just, ball? just no, just just like a run double under. You feel like you could win something like that. Yeah. What about a yeah. running double under? I mean, we Ooh, pretty much just did a, a little run, pig flip, carry sandbag. Yeah. So I mean, something along the lines of that. I wonder how many people have tested that workout at their gym. I hope not a lot. Well, you can't test that. But that no, this is what happens. So like a yeah. coach gives it to the athlete, and then they get you know what, what was your time on that? Do you remember? No, 30 something minutes. Yeah. And then they get 28 minutes, but they didn't run the actual distance. They didn't have to go up the hill. The bag was hundred pounds. Less no one has like, a, I am more well, rogue, rogue doesn't guys. sell the pig and you can't replicate that. But that pig. flip sled's nice. Flip sled. Yeah. But it's not the same. It's not the same. Well, no, there, then, there are no scenarios where it's the same. So I'm saying retest the workout. People be like, Oh, I beat you on this. I'm like, no, you don't. Oh, you're saying from, for, for being able to say you Comparison. did the workout. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. I got you. Yes. I was like, didn't you say the flip sled helped you with the pig? <laughs> yeah. But I meant like if someone, you mean if they're going to say their scores, yeah, yeah. You're so saying like, you're I gonna... could go and do the workout and just say, Oh, that's the hill I'm going to run up. But I have like a hundred pound sandbag and yeah, like right. lighter yeah, yeah, carries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how it always no. works. Nah. What's, right. your, what's your next question? That was it. That was That's it. Oh my three. Goodness. That was fast. Yep. Three. Just, just, boom, I mean, boom, boom, boom. I knew you were tight on time. Yeah, I appreciate Madrid. that, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Travis, Madrid. Travis is taking off from Madrid, so give him some love in the comments. Yeah, give me love. Did you love. lower your love. seat love. during the episode? No, this thing just keeps <laughs> lowering. <laughs> I thought you were shrinking. Okay, oh. we, we got to fix the chair because I looked over during last episode and Max was all the way down. Adam looked like a giant. <laughs> yeah, no, it just keeps lowering. I just looked down and you looked like it a little kid. I thought you were rounding your back. <laughs> I didn't notice it till about about three minutes ago when I was like, man, why do I feel so much lower? Like even on the mic talking, I was like, <laughs> I was at the middle of We got a faulty uh, chair. Make yeah. love to that mic. Okay. All right. Hello. Thanks guys. Thanks Travis. Thank Peace. you. Thank you.